What's up everyone, Mike here from The Art of Guitar, here with a quick lesson on a little mystery I had going on for a long time now, and that's uh, Under the Bridge's intro. I would watch videos, uh, you know, video lessons, I would watch him play it live, and I was convinced that he used a capo in the studio, just because some of the things that you hear in the riff are pretty difficult to do without a capo. I know it's possible, but anyone who's shown how to do that online has never made it sound as smooth as John Frusciante does in the studio. So I just kind of figured, ah, it's John Frusciante, he's awesome, you know, he's probably just pulling it off. But then I really listened with headphones today and I discovered something kind of interesting. So first of all, if you watch him play it live, he plays it more like this. So he'll be using the first four major bar chord. And this isn't a detailed lesson on how to play this intro, but I just wanted to outline some of the things that I found interesting about using a capo versus not using a capo, plus a few other things that I figured out. So without a capo, you have to make this first four major shape. And this is actually called D major, even though you're using the C shape. And you play it like this. Then you have the little run. And then you'll hear him just go like this. And that's interesting because in the recording you can hear a higher note ring out as he does that. Like that. Which sounds great, but it's a little more difficult because you just got done doing this run and then you have to jump to this bar chord and hit both notes at the same time. So that's what sort of tipped me off that, you know, something funny was going on here. And then also there's a part where you have to get back to this first form. He does a hammer on. He goes C-sharp to D, but as he's doing that on the recording, there's a D ringing out over the top of it. That. And if you've tried to play this before without a capo, you know how difficult that is to get to there, to get there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of play it the way he does it live, which is this. So he does not hit that high D live over the top of this hammer-on. And he doesn't do that really cool little hammer-on pull-off part, live at least. So then I put on some headphones and really listened to it. I was trying to get really in-depth like I like to do when I do my level series. And I realized that I hear two guitars going on in the studio. So what I heard was one guitar doing this main part, which is this. And I heard another guitar going like this. So now, with the magic of post-production, I'm going to play the, what John Frusciante plays live and then overdub the, uh, the held out notes, just so you can see how it sounds, alright? So I would say if you're really trying to stay true to the recording, uh, and you're playing live, if you have another guitar player, have them do that higher overdub part while you play the main part. Or you can use a capo, of course, it's just more of a hassle. And uh, halfway through the song, uh, when I played this live, I had to take the capo off and get rid of it. And then your strings go out of tune, it's just a big headache. So uh, I'd recommend doing it the way he does live, because even though it's stripped down a little bit and it's not as fancy, it still sounds great, obviously, because it's John Frusciante. All right, guys, I hope that cleared up a little bit of the mystery for that intro. Maybe a lot of you guys weren't even wondering about that, but it's been keeping me up at night lately. So I'm um, glad I hopefully got to the bottom of it. If you have any other suggestions about it, if you know the ins and outs of how it was recorded, uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks. See you guys.